Let's now talk about hummers, right? Okay. And one of everybody's favorite birds. And, Aren't uh, they? Yeah. This is a time of year. The, the party's over. Yep. Uh, the baby birds are out. And uh, just as they came into this part of the country from Central America, it's time to go back to their other home yep. for the wintertime. And, of course, the, the thing, the people up north, they're already missing a lot of their hummingbirds, if not all of them. Uh, and as we move further south, we're seeing more and more birds because all their birds are coming through it. And I kind of like that. That's yeah. kind of fun. And so we'll see a surge of birds for a while. As we get into October, that'll taper off somewhat rapidly. And uh, they don't all move at one time. They all yeah, have their own little special times to take off. They know when we, to go. Yeah, we have a map that will show you where they yeah. are in the United States. Look at that, just a sea of red. <laughs> and that's that's all the hummingbirds going through here, right? And isn't yeah. it updated yeah. all the time? As you can see, there's very few up in Canada, but there's yeah. some up there. There's some hummingbirds all the way up into Alaska on the West Coast. And they come all the way back oh, down. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Oh, yeah, 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 they're all there. And but you know what? They're not in these, and they're not much in the not Pacific so Northwest. Much, no, yeah. no. And, of course, you have generally one species east of the Mississippi River, and that's the ruby-throated hummingbird. And then west of the Mississippi River, in general, you have all the other species. There's you know, uh, 12, 13, uh, 14, 8, 15 more uh, yeah. that are there a lot. And a few odds and ends that sneak in across the border down there. And every now and then a stray, yeah. which gets everybody excited. It's something that shouldn't be here at all. But, yeah, the ruby throats uh, look like they're t taking over the eastern United States. Yeah, they do. And, and they're yeah. beautiful right now. And they're tanking up, as you like to say. So keep yeah. that nectar out and keep it fresh, right? Yeah, now they've got to they've got to keep a lot of fuel on board because there's a long way to get back home, which is Central America. And uh, the ones on the east coast typically come down and go across the Gulf of Mexico nonstop. To get That's down to amazing. Central America, the ones in, you know, further west, uh, mostly, go down and go down through Texas. Yeah. And then uh, Mexico to get down there. Or maybe yeah. just skirt the Gulf. Yeah. But the ones that leave from over here, if they're from the Atlanta area, and go down like they're going down to the Gulf of Mexico that for a vacation. A tough journey. They've got yeah. a nonstop flight all the way across. I've heard that cruise incredible. ships and other ships will put things out so that yes. they can rest, so they can stop and, and, and rest. And they will do that occasionally. Yeah. yeah. And uh, But they can do this. And they tank up, uh, like a ruby throat will weigh, you know, two and a half to three grams. Yeah. It's a good-sized ruby throated hummingbird. And, but this time of year, when they're ready to go and take this southern flight, they have sat around, lounged around, <laughs> <laughs> and sucked up as much juice as possible, and, and insects, of course, because that's their yeah. real food. And to, spiders, To pack right? on the weight, and spiders, lots of spiders. They yeah. love spiders and yeah. eat a lot of them. They go around flowers, they're picking out the spiders. Yeah. And then, of course, the hummingbird juice is just uh, their extra fuel. But they'll, they'll burn off a lot of their weight, maybe up to half of their body weight on that one wow. flight. Wow. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, and then they really get down there is. and they'll rest and eat and pack on weight down there yeah. to fly back. Uh, the, uh, I kind of hate to see them go. I will put so one thing real quick, though. After your hummingbirds leave, they may not all leave, and you may see some stragglers. Even uh, We've seen some in very early December, ruby throats. Yeah. Apparently healthy, nothing wrong with them. They were just late migrants. That's the way nature works. You know, If something yeah. happens to all the others, that one's going to be a, <laughs> one left. Yeah. Uh, but... We also have the chance in the east and the southeast and in Texas to have other species, generally more western species, move into the southeast and south to spend the winter yeah. as opposed to going down to Central America. And we see a lot and over the last 15 or 20 years. We've investigated a lot and found a lot more species. So as in Georgia, we now have many species, 12, 13 species known to be in Georgia. It used to be one, which was the ruby throat. But yeah. now we're finding in the wintertime, we'll find all the other hummingbirds here. Very, very widely spread out. Still kind of rare to find one, yeah. but it's nice. So we always tell everybody, keep a feeder out in the wintertime. It doesn't stop them from going right. anywhere at all. And you may get one, if there's one around in your area, you may get one to spend the winter with you. Yeah. Can't yeah. hurt, might help. How fun. Yeah. And they're such cute guests to have.
Hello, this is Richard Cole. I want to thank each of you for watching, and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to share it.